old King Hussein. His grandfather, King Abdullah, was assassinated in 1951 because he was trying to get a peace with Israel. On what sort of conditions, Your Majesty, do you think it would be possible to have a peace with Israel? I think a peace settlement with Israel can only be hoped to uh, uh, be brought about is uh, when Israel starts to uh, feel and believe uh, that there are uh, the Arab rights. The battle was waged against us mainly from the air, almost exclusively from the air, with such overwhelming strength and continued sustained air attack on every single unit on every single formation of our armed forces day and night right till last night uh, there are basically two uh, positions two objectives as far as we are concerned one the liberation uh, of all our occupied territories uh, occupied in June of 67. The second, uh, the recognition of the rights of the Palestinians to self-determination, the rights recognized by the United Nations so many times in the past. I believe that uh, the uh, people of Jordan, both in the occupied territory and uh, here, have exercised their right to resist. Uh, the speed with which uh, we have achieved our uh, objective and the efficiency is an indication that it could have happened uh, a long time ago had we taken a different uh, approach. And, and why? What was the failing earlier, do you think? I think the failing uh, earlier uh, uh, throughout uh, the tragic history of, uh, of this region uh, in, in the past, and we're looking now into the future, was uh, the uh, lack of uh, uh, ability, uh, of vision amongst leaders uh, in this entire region. I think the Palestinians suffered from that. Uh, I think that the Arabs suffered from that. I believe that uh, the Cold War may have had an impact on the area. A whole uh, variety of reasons uh, caused us to lose so many opportunities and chances. But finally, we are there. I would like to try to capture a little bit of what's in your heart, and I'm not quite sure how. Um, when you called Her Majesty, or when you told the family, what had happened? How did you express yourself? I said I have uh, some uh, wonderful uh, news. We've made it. And uh, it was uh, early uh, uh, in the morning after a, a long night where we went through uh, everything that had been agreed upon and we modified and adjusted things to the point where we achieved uh, mutual satisfaction. And uh, I felt on top of the world, really, both then and now. President Assad of Syria, as you know, is quite critical of the lease-back arrangement you've reached with the Israelis by which Israeli settlers remain on Jordanian territory. W what do you tell him? I tell him it's none of his business, with, with all due respect. This is uh, a Jordanian uh, matter, and I hope that uh, he will be able to, to uh, address uh, his own dimension of his responsibilities as well. But uh, there is nothing of which we are ashamed, uh, nothing uh, uh, over which we are uh, concerned in the least. Uh, we have returned our sovereignty over every inch of our territory. And uh, uh, that is the way uh, it stands. So uh, I was really surprised that uh, people began to make uh, comments uh, before even reading the, the text of the treaty. What are the factors on the horizon that worry you? Muslim extremism. Muslim uh, extremism, uh, I'm a true Muslim, and uh, I know what my religion is, and I know what my faith is, and I know it is entirely different to what uh, some uh, choose to portray as Islam. Uh, if uh, there are elements that are uh, willing to uh, ride the wave for political gains, so it is a question of a few here and there. They could create uh, problems, I suppose. But there but, are... Uh, 
there, there are people, there are extremists in the region who do not like the way history is being written at the moment by you and the Israelis and even to some extent the chairman of the PLO, Yasser Arafat. How seriously should their determination to disrupt all this be taken? I think that uh, anyone in a position of responsibility and people in Jordan, I hope, will take this uh, seriously. And uh, uh, the only answer I can give you is uh, that uh, one has to fear something in life. I fear God. I don't fear man. And I fear my conscience above everything else. This is peace with dignity. This is peace with commitment. This is our gift to our peoples and the generations to come. President, Prime Minister, Ishaq Rabin, Secretary, and dear friends, they have indeed been two very, very special days, days of commitment and hope, days marking a dream coming true. Days dedicated to the future of our peoples. All our peoples. And to the ones that will follow to live in peace and security. with no barriers separating them. The barriers that have come down through our meetings and our work in these last two days. The desire, the wish, the hope was always there. The time came when this turned into reality. The end of the state of war the beginning of the building of peace for all times to come between our peoples. Hopefully, on behalf of Noor and for myself and all those Jordanians who are proud to be with you here, thank you and God bless you all. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Ms. Albright, Secretary of State, my friend Sandy Berger, and of course, all our friends here, and all our friends who played such a vital part in the last few days in which I was privileged to be an observer and one who sought to give courage to the process that was ongoing. George Tenet and uh, 
As the President said, uh, Dennis has uh, lost his uh, black hair and replaced his tooth grey. I've lost all mine and even my eyebrows. <laughs> but this is part of the life uh, in which we live. And I was privileged to be with you all. And no matter where I would have been, if I had an ounce of strength, I would have done my utmost to be there and to help in any way I can. <laughs> By the way, many in our part of the world, in different parts of the world, have written me off. But uh, I have a lot of faith in God. And uh, I believe that uh, one lives one's destiny. And as far as I am concerned, my morale is the highest it has ever been. And this has been a shot in the arm for me, what you have accomplished today. President Arafat and Prime Minister Netanyahu and Bessie. I recall in this gathering past events over many years. And uh, one thing that remained with me throughout those many years was a total commitment to the cause of peace. We quarrel, we agree, we are friendly, we are not friendly, but we have no right to dictate through irresponsible action or narrow-mindedness the future of our children and their children's children. There has been enough destruction, enough death, enough waste. And it's time that together we occupy a place beyond ourselves, our peoples, that is worthy of them under the sun, the descendants of the children of Abraham. Palestinians and Israelis coming together. I have attended uh, previous occasions here. And of course, you, Mr. President, together with the late Prime Minister Ishaq Rabin, were my partners four years ago in the Washington Declaration and, and later on when the state of peace was finalized in our meetings in Jordan and in Aqaba. I don't think we might have given you as much uh, hard work or uh, less sleep than you have been subjected to of late. But what I found this time and what really gives me hope and confidence is that that same chemistry after the first meeting between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Arafat is there. I think that we passed the crossroad. We have made our commitment to the welfare and happiness and security and future of our peoples in all the times to come. And now our partners are numerous, and we wish them every success in their endeavors, and we'll do everything we can to help them. I think such a step as is concluded today will inevitably trigger those who want to destroy life, destroy hope, create fear in the hearts and minds of people, trigger in them their worst instincts. They will be skeptical on the surface, but if they can, they will cause damage wherever they are and wherever they belong. Let's hope that the overwhelming majority of us, those who are committed to the future, 
those who know what responsibilities they hold now will be able through steady progress and a determined combined joint effort be able to thwart their aims and their objectives and move and maybe God willing witness the dawn that we have all been seeking of a comprehensive peace in our entire region. Mr. President, I've had the privilege of being a friend of the United States and President since late President Eisenhower. And throughout all the years that have passed, I have kept in touch. But on the subject of peace, the peace we are seeking, I have never, with all due respect, and all the affection that I held for your predecessors have known someone with your dedication, clear-headedness, focus, and determination to help resolve this issue in the best possible way. Mr. President, permit me to say what I feel. I was mentioning it more than once in the last few days. You have the tolerance and the patience of Job, and you are the subject of our admiration and respect. And we hope that you will be with us as we see greater successes and as we help our brethren and our friends move ahead towards a better tomorrow. On behalf of Noor and for those uh, colleagues of mine from Jordan, thank you all for your great kindness. And thank you, our Israeli friends and this very fine delegation, for all your contributions and efforts. And obviously, my pride is limitless in the efforts and in the commitment of President Arafat and his colleagues. I think we are moving. We are not uh, marking time, but we are moving in the right direction. I believe that very sincerely, and may God bless our efforts. Thank you very much.